what I've learned in in the study this is that there are these two pools of glucose in the body. The one is the liver and the blood glucose, and the other is the muscle glycogen. And they serve totally different functions. No one tells you that. You know, just take the carbs. You need the carbs. No, no, no. There are two different control mechanisms. And the first mechanism, which is the important one, is that the body regulates the blood glucose concentration. So anytime you take in glucose, and particularly even during exercise, the body's first response is get rid of the glucose out of the bloodstream, burn it or store it. That's the rule. It's nothing, it's nothing to do with, oh, it's unneeded for the fuel in my muscles. That's not what's going on. The body says, this is a catastrophe. You've got to keep the blood glucose normal. And it's my, my impression and belief now, having read so much, that the reason why you have muscle glycogen is simply to store the excess glucose. So you dump the glucose. So when you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, because remember, we were carnivores for millions of years. We don't have the capacity to store much glycogen. We have to glucose or and to, to keep the blood glucose normal. We just got to dump that glucose out of there and into the muscles. And then what happens is the moment you start exercising, you're going to burn that stuff because the body says, I've got to get rid of that rubbish that's in the muscles. Get rid of it. Because this guy's unknown in an hour or in six hours' time, he's gonna have another carbohydrate meal. And I want to store that carbohydrate. So that's how I see muscle glycogen. I see it as a, simply as a reservoir for the excess glucose in the bloodstream. It it serves no other particular function. Whereas the glucose in the bloodstream has a vital role. Because if your blood glucose falls, you you can damage your brain. So that's got to be that becomes the priority in meta in human metabolism. The number one priority is keep the blood glucose flat. That's the number one priority. And so it's very clear that when you take glucose, the body wants to get it out of the bloodstream as soon as it possibly can. Mm. And when you've got lots of muscle glycogen, the body wants to get rid of that. Now, what's really interesting when you go one step further, the muscle glycogen controls its own metabolism. And it does that through insulin. So if you if you start exercise with a high muscle glycogen, the insulin is high, and that inhibits fat oxidation. And as a consequence, you have to burn the glycogen, and that's the body's design. You're going to burn that glycogen first. If, on the other hand, you start with little muscle glycogen, your insulin is low, and your fat oxidation is much increased, and so you burn fat. And that's how the system works. And people think, well, that you just take glucose, and it goes, and it's distributed equally throughout the body, and that's simply not the case. But, but the key point that, that I've emphasized is muscle glycogen regulates its own use. Now, why would that be? Why would that be? And why would muscle glycogen not break down to glucose, which then gets into the bloodstream? You'd think you're storing all this glycogen, and you, you, where you need, you need the glucose in the bloodstream. That's what you want to protect. Why doesn't the muscle release glucose? It's designed not to, because that would interfere with your blood glucose regulation. So the blood glucose regulation is fixed on the liver. That's the controls. And the muscle glycogen is a completely different control mechanism. But no one has ever said that that's what's happening, in, in, at least in, in the physiology science, in the sports sciences. Yeah. It's all about take as much carbohydrate so you can fill your muscle glycogen. Actually, you're filling it because it's try, you're trying not to kill yourself. The, the body's yeah. saying, don't kill me with all this glucose. <laughs> 